Question 15 says a place kicker must kick a football from a point of 36 meters, about 40 yards from the goal. Half the crowd hopes the ball will clear the crossbar, which is 3.05 meters high. When kicked, the ball leaves the ground with a speed of 22.8 meters per second at an angle of 50 degrees to the horizontal. A. By how much does the ball clear or fall short vertically of clearing the crossbar? Enter a negative answer if it falls short. And B. Does the ball approach the crossbar and cross above or beneath it while still rising or falling? So what we know is that there's a there's a change in uh, in x between the bar and between the crossbar and the kicker of 36 meters. This equals 36 meters, and we also know that the initial velocity of the bar, so the the initial velocity is 22.8 meters per second. We know that the angle that that theta is equal to 50 degrees, 50 degrees, and that's above the horizontal. So we're saying that that if the bar, the ball was going here, and this is the ground, that this is 50 degrees. And what we really want to know is whenever the the bar, the ball gets to these this uh, goalpost. Will it be how high will it be? Uh, we uh, so the height of the goalpost is really secondary, so we don't need it at this point. We just want to know how high will the bar the ball be when it gets to the post. So what I need to do is I need to break up this this initial velocity. We said the initial velocity is twenty two point eight. I need to break that up into a horizontal component and a vertical component. So. Um, I can do that with the with uh, trig. And you remember so ka toa. So the sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse, and that will give me so the opposite is this uh, vertical motion. So that'll give me my vertical um, my vertical velocity. So I can say that the sine of fifty. The sine of 50 is equal to opposite, which is uh, what we don't know. So I'll just put an O there over 22.8. And I really want to just find out what this opposite is. I could just put an X there. X is your general unknown. And we can multiply both, both sides by 22.8. So I'd say 22.8 times sine 50 is going to equal my... my uh, V initial in the Y direction. It's going to equal. So that actually gives me an initial vertical velocity of 17. I'm going to try to write it over here. 17.465.5. Uh, meters per second. And then by that same rule, the adjacent over hypotenuse, I can find uh, so I can do 22.8 cosine 50, 50 degrees, not 50 radians. So just make sure your calculator is in degrees. So 22.8 cosine 50 is going to equal my my initial velocity uh, in the x direction, and that is equal to um, 14.65. So I'll write that right here. 14. 0.65 meters per second. Okay, so our initial velocity in the x direction and our delta x combine that together and we can actually find the time that it takes to get to the goalpost. So if we use the equation of the average velocity times time equals delta x, then we can actually um, we can actually use this equation and solve for the time variable. Now I just want to make note real quick that the initial velocity in the x direction there's no force acting against uh, the ball on the x direction until it hits the ground and so it will be constantly at 14.65 meters per second 
whereas in the y direction, gravity is constantly acting against it. So this will continue to slow down and then even go uh, to a negative velocity as it falls back to the ground once it reaches its highest altitude. So um, we can use this because average velocity is going to stay the same for the x direction. We can use this equation. We can uh, solve for the time variable simply time would equal delta x divided by the average velocity. So if we plug in uh, 36 divided by 14.65, that equals, it's, it's about 2.46. And we're just going to round it off to 2.46 seconds. Now to, to find out if the ball cleared or not, we can use um, another equation. So the change in y and this is the this equation is something you, you should be familiar with the initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half of a t squared and now so this is the acceleration in the y direction because there is no acceleration in the x direction uh, and the acceleration in the y direction is simply gravity so we could have put a g there instead of an a um, it wouldn't have changed anything. So we, the initial velocity in the x direction was, I'm sorry, in the y direction was 17.465 meters per second, and the time was 2.46, and then we're going to add that to 1 half times nine, negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times 2.46 squared. That gives a, an answer for delta y is equal to 13.31106 meters. Since the goalpost it tells us in the problem is only a little over 3 meters, we know that this thing definitely cleared the goalpost. However, was it on its way up or was it already falling back down when it did clear that goalpost. But the question wants to know by how much does it cross or fall short. And so we know that the, the thing is 3, um, let's see, 3.05 meters high. So you just take 13.31106, subtract 3.05, and you get about 10.26 uh, meters is by how much it cleared. For this question, we're going to use the definition of acceleration. So acceleration is equal to the change of velocity over time. Well, what is the change of velocity can be broken down further. So that's equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the, the change of time. So um, in here, what, what we have, we're going to assume that the highest point of uh, we're going to assume we're we're trying to figure out the highest point or the what how long it took to get to the highest point in um, in this problem. So in order to do that, we have to solve for time. We know that the acceleration is gravity. That's nine point eight. So we're only talking about our distance upward because we didn't have like I said over and over again. We didn't have any acceleration going in the vertical direction. The only acceleration we had was in the, I'm mean, sorry, we didn't have any in the horizontal direction, but we did have it going in the vertical direction, and so um, we're saying the acceleration going up is equal to the final velocity going up minus the initial velocity going up. Well, I'm just trying to find the time it took to get to the highest point, and at the highest point, the velocity was zero. So... I, I, I'm at the point now, I just have to know my initial velocity and the acceleration, and I can solve for time. So the formula for that would be negative of the initial velocity, because I'm saying that zero is my final velocity, divided by acceleration is equal to the time. And all I did was just manipulate this formula right here. Since my initial velocity was 17, I'm going to have a negative for the initial velocity, 17, 0.465 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared 
and whenever I do the uh, the dimensional analysis, what I'm left with is seconds. And so, first thing you notice, the negatives are going to cancel out, cancel each other out. I'm going to have it at my highest point. I was at 1.78 seconds. So at 1.78 seconds, it hit his highest. The ball hit its highest point. Well, we know from from how long, far it takes to get, or how long it takes to get to the goalpost. It was 2.46 seconds, and so I know I I reached my highest point right here. So I must it must be going back in the downward direction. So it crossed the goalpost as it was falling downward. 